Hey guys, it's Q again, and welcome to YouTube's worst produced, worst manufactured YouTube channel for the Amiga you have ever found or stumbled across. Today is a quick video covering what was discussed over on the Facebook group, which you should always be a part of if you're not doing anything else right now. You should at least join the uh, Commodore Amiga Facebook group. Always do that. Everyone's uh, in there. All the people I keep name dropping, like Doug and Chris and Jan, well actually Jan's not on there. Um, Dan, they're all in there. And I'm in there. We all have to help each other. So yeah, here's the GVP 1230. And you can see, this is where I got the idea from. It's not like I'm an original thinker. I mean, the GVP has this metal shield, which I think is doing double duty for RF possibly, but also maybe cooling. Uh, so here's an 060. This is a, I'm not going to say this is a dead 060. I'm going to say this is an RC1 and the RC1 uh, is known to not play well with the TF1260. So it may not be dead. It just didn't want to work with the 1260. Here is the heatsink I mentioned, the 40 by 40 by 11. And yeah, it fits nicely on there, you know, but the clearance issues, that's a problem. And then it came with, um, came with goo. Where is the goo? Let me, uh, let me try and find the goo. Uh, where is the goo? I can't find the goo. It's not goo, actually. It's thermal pads. Ah, can't find it. Anyway, spoilers. Here you go. This is what I did. You can see that little pink purple thing. That's the thermal pad. And you probably recognize this as a 1200 floppy uh, tray thing. And I've just thermal padded it to the chip and, uh, and it doesn't touch anything. Now, you know, it doesn't matter if it touches anything because this is not touching any of the uh, circuitry anywhere, it's just touching the top of the chip, the thermal pad. So even if the keyboard backing here touches this, it's not gonna do a short or anything. If anything, this pathetic contact area would actually make the entire bottom of this an additional heat sink, but obviously there's not enough thermal transfer through there. I had this rendering the Lightwave Ray Trace benchmark scene. I did it at 320 by 240 low anti-aliasing, and it took one hour and 24 minutes. And that's using this 50 megahertz 60 to 60. And yeah, this is this is warm. It's a little toasty, but again, not uh, not to the point where after an hour and 24 minutes, it was like burning my hand. It was just really warm. And that's awesome. So yeah, this this solution is is dispersing plenty of heat. I didn't get any glitches or hangups or locks or anything. So this solution is working nicely. Uh, yes, my PCMCA is is still dead. I'm super depressed. I don't know what's going on. Is some of you may know who are on the Facebook group. I've, it's not completely dead because if I boot with a card in it, as I said, Workbench will halt loading until I unplug the card and then it'll continue on. But yeah, the point of this video is to show you my inelegant solution for additional cooling. As many have pointed out, since I'm not overclocking it, probably not needed, but the amount of heat dissipation, additional heat dissipation this is doing, uh, I, that, you know, hey, that just helps the longevity of the chip. And, you know, it clears the keyboard when I fold it all up. So, yeah, that was my solution. Obviously, if you have access to not floppy trays, maybe some legitimate aluminum or even a sheet of copper or something, you could do the same thing. And just go with the thermal mass solution. Just the bigger... I mean, you can put a pretty giant, chunky piece of metal across here without interfering with anything to even further increase that. But this is working great. Um... One hour, 24 minutes for the Lightwave Ray Trace benchmark at 320 by 240. Low anti-aliasing is a really good score. Uh, that's that's awesome, actually. And uh, this GVP 1230 Plus is probably going to go into my other 1200, which currently has 3.0 ROMs. And a I think it has an 8 meg 6882 plus clock plus IDE expansion card in it. That card, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that card because the third 1200 I have is not actually mine. It's a long-term slash forever loaner from a friend of mine. And he has a CSI shotgun 12 
or sorry, he has a CSI shotgun 68030 at 50 megahertz in that with, I believe, 16 megs of RAM. So that, that, that won't need that expansion card. So I guess I'll have an extra expansion card handy, which as we know, uh, as they're hard to come by, it's good to have in case something freaks out. But yes, once again, I'm super thankful to Alan or Alin. No one's ever told me if I'm saying that right for hooking me up with this uh, 1260 card for a really great price. I've been waiting over a year to get this patiently or to get anything that would take an 060 patiently. And this has proven to be uh, super awesome and I'm enjoying the heck out of it. So there you go, guys, there's my solution. As always, thank you for watching and uh, you know, just be patient and don't be afraid to hack. Just don't blow anything up because that would really, really suck. All right, bye-bye.